Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a survival horror game in Unity and welcome to episode 19. This tutorial we're going to focus on a couple of different things. We're going to focus on voice acting, so bringing in some voice to the game to go with our subtitles. We'll look at closing up this section of our game to actually complete this little scene we've got going on. And also I want to add a little bit more light to the scene, specifically with our gum. Don't forget, click the subscribe button, click the bell icon as well, stay up to date with every tutorial in this series. And if you've enjoyed what you've seen so far, then please feel free to support me on Patreon where you'll get things like early access, exclusive content, project files, and so much more. With that in mind, let's get to work. So I'm hoping by now you guys have uh, not so much mastered, but you've got your game looking how you want it to look with post-processing. I know that people can spend hours upon hours upon hours actually making their game look pretty decent. So I have tweaked ever so slightly uh, the actual post-processing settings to what you see now. And I'm quite happy with keeping them as they are, but again, it's something that we can always work on and change as we go through the series. So let's start with our voice acting. Now the way this is going to work is it's simply just audio files that we can bring in and activate at the same time as our subtitles. So we're going to add in um, or rather change maybe one or two lines uh, within the subtitles but we need to bring in those lines of audio. So in our audio let's uh, right click create folder just have this as voice. Uh, within here, I'm actually going to create another subfolder and I'm going to group everything by specific scenes. Now, although this is named scene one, this eventually won't be scene one. This will probably be the second scene that we have voice on because we're going to eventually create uh, an intro sequence. So I'm going to have this known as scene zero two. So within here, I'm going to bring in these three lines, which is actually my voice that I've recorded and changed just a little bit. They're not very good in all honesty. Uh, if you feel like re-recording any of these lines that we hear in this tutorial, please, you know, have a go and let me know. Uh, I'll put them on the website though, in case you want to download for some bizarre reason. So let's start all the way back at the beginning where we uh, say, oh, I need to get out of here. So it's in this room right here. Now we need to go to the script that actually initially triggers that cutscene. Oh, well, it's not really a cutscene, is it? It's the first section. So if I can remember, it's in sequ is it sequence objects. It is. So A, opening, is where we originally put the subtitles, I believe. So we need to go into that script now. And this is where we're going to do the first set of voiceover uh, files. And it really isn't that difficult. It's just a case of aligning and timing everything appropriately. So as the audio plays at the same time as the uh, subtitles appear. And it can sometimes just be a case of changing how long the subtitles appear on the screen for. But again, we can deal with that quite easily. So the script is loaded now. So we need to place in here two extra variables. First one, public audio source. And I'm going to call this one... Um, Let's call it line zero one, semicolon, and public audio source line zero two, semicolon. Now, I said we're going to add some extra things here because although we've only got one line right here, I want to add in an extra one before this starts. So the first line is actually going to be, I'm actually going to uh, copy that entire line. I think it's probably best and just place it down here for now. The first line is going to be something like, I can't remember what I recorded. I think it's where am I? So we're going to put dot 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 where am I? And that's going to be about two seconds long. So that's fine. So at the same time as that being uh, displayed on screen, we have line zero one dot play. Upper close bracket, semicolon. Uh, we wait for two seconds. And after two seconds, I'm going to set the text back to blank. And then wait for maybe half a second. So it's going to be 0.5F. And then after that, we're going to say, I need to get out of here. So that's going to be another 
probably two seconds. So we need to play the line O2. So line O2 dot play, open close bracket, semicolon. And then we need to wait for two seconds. And then after two seconds, well, it carries on as normal. So we may need to change the waiting period we have here, depending on how it sounds and how it looks in the game. So save that script, head back into Unity. And on our first person controller, we need to go to, in fact, we will create a new game object. So on FPS controller, right click, create empty, F2, and let's rename this as voiceover. And then I'm going to right click and create empty on voiceover. So that becomes the parent object. And we'll call this one line zero one. We could make this a little bit more um, you know, relevant to what the lines are, but in such a small scene with very few lines, we can just go for the simple route like we're doing now. So let's drag scene zero two, line zero one onto there and untick play on awake. I'm going to hold control, press D to duplicate, rename it to line two and add line two over here. So now we have those two lines set there. Now we just need to add them over here. So onto there, onto there. Remember this is the sequence objects uh, object I'm on and then the A opening sequence. So we're just adding them in there. I'm going to save the scene and let's see how this looks and sounds. Oh, where am I? I need to get out of here. Okay, so that's fairly deep. That's pretty good timing. I think I'm just going to lower this to probably 1.7 F and maybe I think that might do actually. So before we test that one again, let's set the third voiceover line and that's going to be within the trigger, which is just through this door. And I believe it is first trigger right there. So this is going to be now B first trigger. So let's go into that script and do pretty much the same thing. So it's going to be public game object. And we'll have this line zero three semicolon. And all we need to do is basically just play line zero three right after we set the text. So line zero three dot play, open close bracket, semicolon. Uh, not play animation because it's not an animation. It's play. I've realized I've actually got that as a game object, not audio source. Silly mistake there, Jimmy. Uh, so let's save that script. So yeah, it's audio source and we just play it as soon as we have that line right there. Head back into Unity. And same as we did with the other two lines, we just need to hold control, press D to duplicate it. And rename to line three. And basically, yeah, you've probably already guessed it. Drag that over here, and that's line zero three. Thank you, Malwarebytes. And finally, set on the first trigger that variable. Drag and drop line three, and I'm gonna resave my scene. And now let's see how this all pans out. Oh, where am I? I need to get out of here. Okay, so far so good. Looks like there's a weapon on that table. Okay, so this is where I, now where I want to kind of change things just a little bit more because of the way I actually have my game set up with the post-processing, we can't really see some items, but I want to display them a little bit differently. So I figured this uh, particular object here is pointing where we need to go, but what if it gives us a little bit of extra indication in the way of, well, a light source we haven't used yet? So let's explore the uh, light source to actually light this area up. So we need to find the object that we have here, which is the guide arrow. And I'm gonna set that back on for now. And inside that guide arrow, I'm gonna right click. Uh, let's go to light and let's go to spotlight. Now it's obviously upside down as we can see. Yep, pointing completely the wrong way. So I'm gonna change it or invert it. So 180 degree rotation right there and I'm going to change the spot angle to kind of open things up a little bit more now it doesn't really make much of a difference as we can see right here simply because we don't have the post processing on here so let's see how this looks in our game 
Oh, where am I? So, fingers I crossed. We should actually here. have something looking a little bit better. We can see our gun. Looks like there's a weapon on that table. So, it's not as good as I would like. So, let's try range. Higher. Intensity. Okay, so... How is that looking? Not convinced by how that is looking, to be honest. So I think we may need to, rather than stop play, head to scene view and let's see how it looks. So it does look like it's okay, but the post-processing is causing us some issues. So we may not be able to use the spotlight as intended. Lighting is really difficult in uh, Unity at, well, any game engine at times. Getting it spot on can be a bit of a problem. So that is how it looks, and it's not exactly fantastic. It could be the spot angle. If we change that, does it really give us what we need? I don't think so. Okay, so let's try something a little different. Experimentation is always a good thing. So let's get rid of that spotlight, and let's try duplicating this light over here. So this was our original testing light, and it illuminates this section over here, despite post-processing. What we could do is actually bring it maybe over here and see if we can actually illuminate both of these uh, important items, as it were. I guess we can change the intensity maybe to two. And I think we're going to turn the guide arrow off now because we have no need for it to be on right now. Let's see how this looks. As long as we can see the weapon to some degree, oh, we should be all right. I need to get out of here. You'll find yourself at this point now testing more and more. Looks like a lot a of uh, time is spent testing, and it can be a little bit of a pain sometimes. Okay, so it's still not entirely visible. This is where we really need to kind of work on how it looks, and I'm going to turn the image effects back on in the scene view so we can modify and change how it looks. If we were to move this light over here, we still really wouldn't be able to see it. So. I think we need to work a little bit more on how this looks, particularly with post-processing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my first-person character, post-processing behavior, and change the uh, ambient occlusion, because that is causing this. Let's change it to nothing, and we can see the gun there. So we need to work on our ambient occlusion here. So I'm thinking probably rather than have it as four, maybe three with a slightly smaller radius. Uh, let's see how the rest of the scene looks. Okay, it doesn't look too bad. And can we actually work with this light as it is? Maybe. So I'm going to stop play there and turn this intensity back down to one. And let me find the gun itself. And again, this is just different ways of showing how we could do things. I guess, you know, you don't really necessarily have to do it this way, but you can if you want to. So M9, I'm going to add onto there a new light. So let's have light and let's have point light. I'm going to bring it up, but I'm going to decrease the range to one. But I'm going to increase the intensity quite high. And hopefully we should be able to illuminate our gun a little bit better. So obviously that will disappear when we pick up the gun. So let's now check oh, how this where looks. Where am I? I need to get out of here. Yes, looks I can like already see the gun quite well over table. there. So I think, yep, that should do the trick now. And I guess it's all about how you want to display your gun. Oh, <clears throat> yep, I've got the ammo. Okay, so last thing we're going to do is rather than have a big blank space at the end that we could just kind of run out of and fall off, uh, I'm now going to just quickly, finally, duplicate this door and put it at the end. So this door is going to be the uh, exit to this area and take us to the next place. I'm going to change this back to how I originally had it. There we go. So let's take the door and use it as the end door. To this entire area. Control, press D, bring it over here, 
and that should close up the entire area now. I guess you can always have something covering up here. It's entirely up to you. Uh, again, it's your game. You be the one to design it in whatever way you can. You can you know, take the time to do the things that I don't. Oh, so, guys, I? next tutorial, what to we're going to take a look here. at is we're going to start, I think, taking a bit of a break from this Looks scene. Looks like there's a weapon on that table. It does look like there is. And I think we're going to create a, or start looking at creating like a creepy menu. And from there, we're going to start building like a really cool cutscene, which flows into the game. So we'll give ourselves a bit of a story and a background to the game. So guys, until then, you work on how your game looks and uh, you get your voice acting in there. And like I said, if you want to have a go at the voice acting yourself, please just let me know. So guys, until the next tutorial, thank you very much for watching.